What screams hardcore enthusiast more than ripping your processor in two pieces, slathering it in liquid metal thermal compound, and slapping it back together like the world's most metal sandwich? We're, uh, we're deleting a processor. What does that mean and what does it do for us? Well, the idea is to replace the thermal interface material between the die and the integrated heat spreader that came with the processor with something that looks and sounds way cooler. This will improve the heat transfer from the processor to the integrated heat spreader, which will allow your heatsink to push that heat out more easily. Lower temperatures means longer CPU lifespan and or potentially higher overclocking. That's right, get good or die trying. That being said, here's what we'll be using. Obviously, the processor, microfiber cloth or an equivalent for wiping pre-existing thermal paste off, isopropyl alcohol, also for cleaning off that thermal goop, this deleting tool from Rocket Cool, this cool laboratory liquid prothermal compound, and if this is your first time, some Valium to combat your upcoming anxiety attack. The cool laboratory solution we have here is liquid metal, which sounds really hardcore by the way, consisting of 100% liquid metal alloy. It may look like mercury, but it's got none of that, so it's fairly non-toxic, though I still wouldn't recommend shooting up with the included syringe. Be careful with what you put it on though. This is safe to use with most metals like silver, nickel, and copper, but it does not play well with aluminum. The integrated heat spreader, or IHS, of your processor is typically copper with nickel plating, so you're probably okay there. But you ought to double check your processor model just in case. And the same goes with your heatsink, many of which are aluminum based, so take care. Though I don't really recommend using this for any reason other than deleting anyway. Your typical thermal paste will work just fine for the consummation of your heatsink and your processor. Back to the deleting. The first thing we'll do is pop the CPU into the tool, try to angle the triangle on the processor with the triangle on the tool. Once that's done, place the pieces together and fix the three screws in place. Screw the thing with significant vigor until you pop it, but also be gentle. Go ahead and remove the cover and you'll see your deflower delitted processor. The glue on my chip was a little stubborn, but that's nothing a little finger work can't fix. Naturally, what follows next is the cleanup. Using isopropyl alcohol, remove all traces of the previous thermal compound from the die and the IHS. Also remove the glue from the IHS and the PCB with a credit card or your fingernail. Again, exercise caution as you don't want to damage the PCB. After we've wiped off, we can go get our liquid metal. Apply a small amount of the liquid metal onto the CPU die and spread it as evenly as you can with the Q-tips provided. I tried to stick with these specifically as regular Q-tips would leave cotton strands in its wake, and that wouldn't be very cool. Even the ones provided leave a bit of a mess, but it'd be better than the alternative. If you have any excess, try to mop it off with the Q-tip, being careful not to get any of the compound anywhere aside from on the die. This stuff is conductive and getting it anywhere it doesn't belong will leave a bad taste in your mouth, especially if you put it in your mouth. At this point, you can either re-glue the IHS back on or just let it hang. I'll be doing the latter. Place the chip back into the motherboard socket and place the IHS back on top, centering it as best you can. Lower the motherboard's retention arm, making sure the little wings on the IHS are secured by the bracket to keep it in place. The process for installing your cooler remains the same, so go get that done and let's take a look at the results. Starting with a clean seat, before we blow our lid, running the i7-7700K at 4.8GHz 1.35V with a 17 degrees Celsius ambient temperature, we see an hour-long real bench stress test yield an average of 78.75 degrees Celsius, with the hottest core hitting 86C. After we took our top off, the same test conditions with an 18C ambient temperature yielded 57.75 degrees Celsius, a 21 degree drop. The hottest core only reached 62C, 24 degrees lower than what we had previously. In my i7-7700K review, I managed to hit 5 GHz at 1.375 volts, but stressing the processor shot me way up to 99 degrees Celsius, which was way too hot for me to be comfortable. This time around, I pushed it to 1.39 volts for extra stability and ran the stress test again at the same 5 GHz. With ambient temperatures still in the 18 degrees Celsius range, average temps were around 65.75, and the hottest core reached 72C. I kept bumping the voltage up in hopes of hitting 5.1 GHz, but I consistently hit blue screens as soon as I logged into Windows on every attempt up to 1.43 volts. Conclusion time! Is this something you can live without? Probably. Your processor won't reach ridiculous temperatures unless something is either wrong with the cooler, or you get super ambitious with your overclock. 85 Celsius is the absolute max I would feel safe running my processor at for extended periods of time or 80 degrees Celsius for 24-7 operation. If you find yourself going past that, this may be something you want to consider, if not to overclock further, just for peace of mind.
I wouldn't call it a safe procedure for obvious reasons like potentially damaging your CPU or definitely voiding your warranty, but if you're careful, the process is actually pretty easy, and I trust you'll be just fine. I'm a klutz, and my computer has yet to go up in a ball of flames, so that's promising. But just on a side note, Intel, buddy, come on. You couldn't have used something better than that flaky crap you put on my $350 processor? <sighs> so that's all I have to say about that. Like, dislike, comment, subscribe, share, leave me questions if you've got them. Would you feel safer with deleting your processor after watching this video? Let me know. Thanks for watching, my name is Steven, and I am a little dim. Bye bye. Time to go shovel. I don't know if you could tell, but I, I decided to go with cotton candy today because I was feeling sweet. Ha! Ah, and slapping it back together like some kind of mm, mm, word. Sandwich. Sandwich. Which sounds totally hardcore, by the way. Consistent. Dude. Yeah. Uh, my recording time. Oh, my shit is still on. Which part did I leave off on? It may look like Mercury. Mercury. Though I don't really recommend using this for any other reason other than deleting any way I messed up. For any other reason, any reason other than- you know, I, did it, I did the same thing again. But you ought to double check your processor model just in case. I caught myself messing up and now I feel bad. Though I don't recommend using this for any other reason other than del- I did it again! I have to go shovel so I'm trying really hard not to mess up which means the bloopers might suck but then again they might not because I suck at not messing up whatever with a 17 degree ce ce celsius go on go do it fast get it done do it right the first time yeah sure that's gonna work we see an hour long real bench stretch 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 test stop blinking yielded 57.770 in my 7700k review I managed to hit 5 gigahertz at 1.37 Five. I managed to hit 5 gigahertz at 1.37... Th that's a lot harder than it looks. I wouldn't call it a... 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 a. Would you feel safer with deleting your... Delete... Deleting... Deleting... Would you feel safer deleting your processor?